you know, they're 18 and 19, and here we were, we were only 18 and 19. We want them to be able to say, look what he went through. You go from thinking about girls and cars to staying alive. I did two tours in Vietnam. Uh, my first tour, I was a captain flying fixed wing down in the Delta. Uh, my second tour is a helicopter pilot up in the Highlands. Uh, I was a major. Well, I was 16 years old when I enlisted in the Navy. Quite an interesting trip, especially for a youngster who had never been out of the state of Tennessee before I joined the Navy. Today we're going to learn about a project that was started by a local educator to help his students connect to and understand world history through conversations with people who were actually a part of the story. Join us as we catch up with social sciences teacher Matt Deegan to talk about the Charlottesville High School Veterans History Project. Come on! Why are we doing this? To honor the veteran you interviewed with your work. It was almost like it happened yesterday, the way he told it. He remembered all the details. He showed us pictures and we asked him questions. I cannot thank them enough because they've done so much for us. I just didn't think he would be that young going to, you know, a war. Matt, what inspired you to start the Veterans History Project? Well, it was the, the winter of 2014 and I was home with my parents in their house in New Jersey where I grew up and my mother had an envelope that she handed me and in it was an article that featured a local high school history teacher who had a project involving um, military veterans and it was kind of a eureka moment for me where I said to myself, this is it. So why was that important to you though? Why, why did you want to teach in this way? I think that events can be very distant from students mm -hmm. and I was seeking a way to bridge that distance and make them see that history is accessible. It's not just in a textbook. It's not just the people in the textbook who are important. It's all of us. History is simply the telling of stories. That's something I try to relate to my students. And we all have a story to tell. So having um, a military veteran as the, um, the foundation of this project made sense to me based on the world history curriculum. So make sure you, it's you a local a person, project, a local story, but who's connected to this global event, global conflict. So when the students come in at the beginning of the year and you talk about this project and you say, this is what we're going to be doing this year, what is their response? They are unsure. I think there's some anxiety because they're not used to speaking to an elder, a stranger in this way. And, and then there's some indifference, um, not fully understanding the project. So what the students do is they go to um, the Vietnam War Museum and at the end of touring the museum, there are uh, military veterans from the community that come and small groups of students conduct interviews. They lead the interviews and after they've recorded their interviews, we come back to the classroom and they make some sort of product that uh, honors the veteran's story in some way. So the person I interviewed for this project was my grandpa because I looked up to him as a child and I feel like if we know more about things that happen that are bad, we could try to change it for the better. I feel like it's just like more of a personal connection and like now a lot of people is like on your phones and everything and to sit down and talk to a person face to face, it's a great experience. We were in a fierce firefight and it was difficult to even breathe because of the sulfur and the, the cordite. And when I looked up, I could see the flag and it was tattered and torn, but it was straight out in the breeze. It was really a, a good moment for me. The veterans are so courageous in allowing us, my students, myself, into moments and memories that are, are difficult to articulate. And they are so honest with my students in a way that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. um, that continues to surprise me how strangers can be so honest with each other so quickly. Um, as I said, the veterans, 
I think, feel a sense of obligation to get this story out. And a young person um, gives them a venue to do that in maybe a way that a, a, a similar aged peer could not. And a veteran does it at, at his or her own expense because for many, telling these stories that, you know, is going to be a hardship. They're, gonna, they're going to have nightmares. They're going to experience PTSD by, by participating. But it's, they want to do it. They really, really want to share these stories with, with students, with teenagers. Some of the veterans have told me that after their interviews with students, they have nightmares. And it is so, um, when you think about that, how courageous is it to know they're going to experience these things, but to do it anyway because they, feel, they see the value in sharing the story so much. Uh, and that's something that, that I take away from this personally. It's the war is one thing, but what happens after the war that I think we often don't remember? And I think these students get that from these interviews. It's not just the conflict which is, you know, the part that makes the Hollywood movie, but it's what happens after the war. You have to live your life, and you have to raise a family, and you have to have a job, and how do you do that being through um, the horrors of war? Right. In Vietnam, you never heard of anything that the GIs did that was good. People did not realize that we had uh, ties to the local orphanages in Vietnam, and since I was in the Delta, we spent a lot of time at the Mito Orphanage to give back. And it was also important for us to do something like that because it got us away from the war for a while. And it was more like being at home than it was in a combat zone. History uh, is just a chain of events all linked together. And that's the thing that they have to look back at. Where did we start? and how we have progressed through all of this all the way up the road. Go deeper with the hows and whys. Have a rising action, climax, and falling action in your narrative about your veteran. So there was a question that one of the students asked one of the veterans about race relations during the war. Talk about that. Yes, so there are these beautiful moments in the tour and the interview that are unexpected and this was one such interaction between a student and a veteran. Um, Tom Oakley was sharing um, his exhibit and telling students about it. And then he asks, any questions? And Addison Ely asked about race relations in Vietnam among the veterans, which was one of those questions that bowls you over. You're not expecting something so so honest, but I think that's the beauty of working with teenagers. They, they can go there and ask that question. And, and Tom was prepared for it in a way that no one expected. He shared the story of how an African-American soldier um, saved his life, and he would not be standing where he was at the museum if not for that soldier. And he told the students that we all bleed red, um, which continues to stick with my students and it was a powerful moment to say that war is not discriminating. And your students have also interviewed World War II vets. Yes, there are a number of World War II veterans who are still with us. In this particular um, interview session this year, my students Max and Kobe interviewed a Howard Halfacre who um, is 92 and is clear-headed and was recounting his experiences in the Battle of Iwo Jima. And I think for Max and Kobe, it's an experience that they'll never forget. After we were hit with a suicide plane with a 500-pound bomb, you can see people standing up. His story was amazing. Like, it was a real moment. And it was like, I've never met a, like a soldier who fought in World War II, only my grandma, who had like been in that experience. So it was really, it was, yeah. Once they get here, and they start actually getting into a vehicle or touching something and hearing the stories, their whole perspective changes. And uh, I don't think we've ever had anyone leave here, student, that hasn't learned something. And uh, that's what it's all about. The project has evolved. It's 
a theme that I weave into my curriculum starting on the first week of school yeah. where I ask the students, what is war? When is it appropriate? When is it not appropriate? Unfortunately, throughout world history, there are a lot of wars. Right. Uh, and so I'm able to weave these themes in and out of, of many of the periods that we study. So you've developed a lot of really great partnerships in our community through this project. Talk a little bit about those. Yes, I have. The veterans have been so generous with their time and their stories. And this project continues to grow thanks to them. They have invited us into their lives. I think particularly this museum, um, which was founded by Craig LaMontagne, and has been such a great educational tool for me, and I know other schools use it as well. And our veterans deserve a voice. I think outside of the veteran community, I think the larger Charlottesville community, there are so many stories that also need to be told by people who aren't in a textbook or people who might not get written about in the newspaper. So I'd like to expand the oral history project for students so that it's other community members um, outside of veterans. Every piece of history is very important. Um, and it's very important to learn about the history, not only from textbooks and not only from the teachers, because there are feelings and emotions connected to them. It gave you a sense of like pride or like nationalism in your country so like you could talk to a veteran who was there and was really in the war and fought for the country. It breaks your heart when you look out and you see row after row after row of white crosses and you just think how hard it was for them to sacrifice their life and it's how lucky you are that you would be able to stand there and look at it. I just look back and think I've been a very, very fortunate person 